my name is Aggregator today. <laughs> but uh, actually, uh, I am Samira Rahnama. I'm a PhD student at uh, Alborg University. And uh, I will uh, present the Work Package 2 demonstration setup. And uh, we are going to uh, demonstrate our experimental setup today uh, together uh, with my colleagues. Uh, this is a joint work uh, between Alborg University, uh, Danfoss, uh, and Gonfos, and then um, Torben Green from Danfoss and Casper uh, Hilo uh, Line from Gonfos also present their own setup. So it's uh, work package two. Uh, uh, let me tell a bit about the uh, work package two and uh, what we are working on work package two. Uh, actually, uh, Lars Henry covered uh, some of the things I, uh, I wanted to say and also David. <laughs> but I just want to say that in Work Package 2, we uh, are working on the uh, consumer side. And uh, we all uh, agreed that uh, in the future, a smart grid uh, consumer will uh, play an active role uh, in uh, providing ancillary services to the grid. And this uh, requires new entities. Uh, and one of them is aggregator. And uh, a general definition I can uh, give uh, from the aggregator is the entity which is uh, placed between uh, uh, a number of consumer and a grid operator uh, to handle the services that can be offered by these consumers to the grid. But what the aggregator's uh, responsibility is and uh, which entities it has interaction with, however, it depends on many factors. Uh, the aggregator may want to provide services to the DSO at the distribution grid level, to the TSO, or uh, to the BRPs. Uh, different kind of uh, consumers can be aggregated, uh, ranging from uh, household appliances uh, to uh, large industrial uh, consumer. Uh, and the different control policy can be taken by the aggregator to manage the DRs, direct control, indirect control. But uh, in work package two, uh, we, uh, uh, we focus on designing an aggregator based on direct control policy, and the aggregator will play in a hierarchical setup, as you see here. It's similar to what uh, Lars Henrik showed uh, to you. Um, uh, we uh, assume uh, industrial consumers in our setup, so uh, a few of them is big enough in order to bid in the market, and we can imagine uh, uh, some uh, central controller at the aggregator that uh, uh, works based on direct control and informa information exchange between the DRs. Uh, uh, and uh, we considered uh, this scenario specifically in uh, Work Package 2 that uh, the aggregator is a uh, uh, receive some uh, power reference from the top level controller, could be DSO, TSO, or a BRP, and uh, the uh, task, uh, and the, um, the aggregator should follow this power reference within a certain period of time, which we called it the activation time. And then the task of the aggregator in, in this setup is to distribute this power reference between uh, the number of consumer in an optimal way. Uh, with considering the uh, constraint uh, on each consumer. And uh, to do that, uh, aggregator needs to know some uh, parameters uh, from the consumer that uh, kind of characterize the flexibility uh, of the consumers. Um, other than this power distribution, uh, we have another distribution from the top level controller to uh, the aggregator. For this level, we assume some static optimization and it's like that before the activation time, each aggregator will communicate the cost or profit curves, which says the cost of uh, offering uh, flexibility per uh, specified power reference. And uh, based on this information, the top level controller uh, will run uh, a one-time optimization uh, to find this, uh, the optimum uh, value for this alpha. And um, this alpha will be fixed during the uh, activation time. But today, uh, for our uh, demonstration setup, we just consider one part. Uh, we have one 
aggregator and uh, we have two DERs which are supermarket refrigeration system and the chiller system connected to the ice tank and uh, we aim uh, hopefully to uh, demonstrate one of the DSO services. Why DSO services? Uh, David already mentioned that uh, in work package three of iPower uh, people already worked on the definition of uh, power uh, the services that can be offered uh, from DERs and uh, would be interesting uh, for the DSO part and uh, as you saw, basically there are uh, seven type services and uh, among them uh, we want to demonstrate power max scenario. So um, Giuseppe, I guess, asked which one uh, is the most interesting. I would say power max because we want to demonstrate it today. And why power max? Because the first uh, three services is, in the first three services it's just, uh, it's like that the aggregator just sends some static set point uh, to the DERs and there is no closed loop control uh, between the DERs and the aggregator so uh, we thought it's less interesting uh, to demonstrate and uh, the last two services contains both active power and reactive power but the focus is on reactive power and the DERs uh, that are available uh, for our demo uh, just uh, contains uh, active power so uh, then the most uh, interesting services uh, uh, for, uh, that can match to our setup is PowerCap and PowerMax and uh, these are uh, kind of the same, similar to each other and the only difference is in the involvement of uh, DSO. In the PowerCap services, DSO is also in the loop and uh, provides some dynamic feedback to the grid. Uh, but in PowerMax, uh, DSO just uh, sends some static set point to the aggregator and the closed loop control uh, will be between the aggregator and the DERs. Since PowerMax is simpler, uh, we decided to try this first and uh, hopefully in the future we want to also try power uh, cap scenario. You already saw uh, this figure also. Uh, I just want to say the basic idea behind the PowerMax scenario is to, uh, by buying this service, DSO can be ensured that the aggregated consumption will be below a, a specified power. So during this time, the aggregator uh, will be activated to um, ask the consumer to lower their consumption uh, behavior. So uh, different parts of this, uh, the <laughs> Different components uh, of our demo uh, are located in different places. Uh, we were running aggregator at the campus of Aalborg University and uh, actually it worked well. <laughs> I hope it worked uh, well today from here. Uh, we have chiller with ice storage that is uh, located in a, at the campus of Gonfos in Biambu. It's a nice city and I spent three weeks there, nice small city. Uh, we have a supermarket refrigeration system at Norbrook and uh, we have uh, syslab facilities here. So we uh, connect these parts uh, virtually through the internet. So here are the basic uh, components of our setup and uh, I will say in short uh, about the uh, sequence of operation in our demo and then uh, I will run and uh, I will say in details. So as I said, uh, the, uh, the DSO uh, can, uh, uh, can uh, uh, analyze the grid and based on the load forecast that is available for DSO, uh, before the activation time, the DSO is able to say to what extent uh, the, uh, we need to lower the consumption. So it can define this power max scenario and the DSO will report this power max to the aggregator before the activation time. When the activation time comes, uh, uh, aggregator run an optimization problem uh, which yields to the desired power reference for a uh, supermarket system and for chiller system. So aggregator asks the consumer to follow this power reference and the consumer uh, will try to follow this in the best possible uh, way. They change their local setting in order to follow this and then they will uh, report the actual uh, measured power uh, to the aggregator and uh, 
the aggregator uh, will announce the aggregated consumption to the DSO. Uh, we don't have super, uh, we uh, don't connect supermarket and chiller to the syslab actually, so we simulate the supermarket and chiller with some dump loss at the syslab and uh, we also need some scale parameters to scale down the system, uh, but this last part uh, maybe is more relevant when we want to uh, demonstrate power cap scenario because uh, in this scenario we have uh, DSO also in the loop and uh, we get uh, feedback from the syslab. But since we want to have all the uh, setup, uh, we try it also today. So uh, here is the agenda of our talk uh, from now on. I will start uh, a one hour uh, activation time. Uh, we need at least one hour uh, to see something tangible. Uh, so uh, and, uh, in the meantime, I will explain the PowerMax scenario and uh, what we expect from the aggregator and uh, what, in, uh, what kind of information we need to exchange between the components. Then uh, we will have a break or you can also ask questions during this time just to let Casper and Torben come and uh, explain their own system. And uh, at the end, uh, I will uh, explain uh, the optimization <coughs> problem at, at the aggregator and then end of the activation and we can see and discuss the results. Uh, but what will you see on the screen uh, when I start the program? Uh, basically you will see uh, these uh, five graphs. Uh, the desired power uh, reference uh, that is asked by the aggregator and the uh, measured actual measured power reference for both supermarket and chiller system. Uh, we also see the aggregated uh, consumption to, s to compare it with the power max limit, uh, both on this screen and uh, we can also see the dump loads and it should be the same here. And we can see the thermal energy that is stored in each system, which, is, which we can interpret it as a state of the charge of the system. Uh, and these are the parameters that kind of characterize the flexibility, the available flexibility in each system. So now activation time. <laughs> Uh, so I set the activation time one minute later, so I need to wait one minute just to run the program. <laughs> So it takes some time to uh, see the uh, graphs on the screen. So uh, before uh, this appears, uh, let me just vote what we expect uh, to see from the aggregator. Depends on the power max, the amount of power max and depends on the duration of the activation time, we can see different behavior and different power distribution, but uh, this is the one that uh, is the most interesting one uh, and uh, we would like to hopefully see this behavior on the screen. Uh, so, as I said, in PowerMax, we want to keep the consumption below this level, that is uh, defined long time before the actuation time. And um, if the aggregated consumption is already below this level, then no action is needed from the aggregator, but we assume that it is not. 
So this means that each DER should uh, lower the consumption uh, in order to keep the aggregated consumption below this level. But uh, DERs may simply say no to this request because uh, this uh, maybe makes uh, them to work outside of their uh, optimal uh, area and uh, for example, in supermarket system, maybe this makes uh, the uh, cold room of the, temp uh, the temperature cold room go uh, above the limit. Uh, so please don't uh, make it big, then we cannot. And uh, at the chiller side, uh, maybe we have uh, this may, may lead to some uh, discomfort uh, in the room that we need to keep it cold. Uh, but uh, here we aim to use uh, the flexibility of two different DRs. Both of them are uh, thermal energy storage but with different uh, characteristics. Uh, one of them is chiller system and chiller is equipped with the uh, ice tank. So the aggregator can ask the, the chiller uh, to save some ice in the tank uh, and uh, then we can use the ice tank uh, uh, when the activation time comes and we can melt the ice uh, and uh, we can then lower the consumption of the chiller. And uh, keeping ice inside the ice tank uh, is, al is almost with no cost because there is no uh, the ice tank is isolated very well and there is no uh, loss to the surrounding. Uh, but uh, making ice is with cost because the chiller needs to be run with a uh, lower COP in order uh, to make ice. Uh, but at, uh, on the other side we have, uh, so we can say that chiller is a low COP unit with uh, less cost less loss. Uh, so when the activation time comes, we can uh, ask the uh, chiller to decrease its consumption uh, to this level, but we can't keep the chiller off for a long time. This uh, due to several reasons. For example, sometimes uh, we need to run the chiller and we need to use the ice tank uh, together to uh, satisfy the cooling load. But uh, we have another DERs which is supermarket system and uh, in supermarket we can store thermal energy inside the refrigerated food for later uh, use uh, in the future but uh, uh, keeping uh, energy inside the supermarket is with uh, loss uh, uh, because there is a heat uh, uh, because the food uh, there is a loss uh, to the surrounding. Uh, but on the other hand, saving process, uh, we, we don't have significant drop in the, COP, uh, in the COP of the system during the saving process. So uh, we had the idea uh, that uh, we can use the uh, activation time to uh, save some energy inside the supermarket while the chiller is off. Uh, so basically in this part, chiller, uh, supermarket use uh, uh, more, ener uh, more energy that uh, it needs, uh, so uh, it will be run uh, above the baseline, which is the uh, preferred uh, power consumption. And then when a uh, chiller needs to uh, switch, uh, to be switched on, uh, the supermarket can reveal this uh, energy that is already stored during the activation time. Um, and this uh, switching uh, behavior uh, uh, can be repeated several times uh, during the activation time. Uh, today we assume one hour activation time, but uh, basically uh, if you look at the report uh, from PowerMax scenario, uh, it is defined for four hour, I guess. So with this switching behavior, we are able to offer this for two hours. Okay, uh, you can see uh, this, the system are running on, this, on the screen. Uh, uh, actually, I would like uh, that this, uh, this is the actual uh, measurement uh, and uh, it uh, was above the limit all the time and I would like to see this above the limit, but not, we are not lucky today. 
uh, and uh, this is the uh, desired and measured power of the chiller system and the supermarket system. Uh, this figure, uh, uh, this actually shows the state of the charge of the chiller system and can uh, say actually uh, uh, how much ice we have uh, in the ice tank. Uh, so uh, the chiller is able to provide this amount of energy for upregulating and this amount of energy for downregulating. Uh, for the supermarket system is a bit different. Actually, this is the uh, total uh, heat, uh, total capacity we can get from the supermarket system, but since supermarket is a bit different than chiller system, and uh, we have some other constraint, uh, Torben will explain this better. We cannot uh, utilize all the capacity uh, at each sampling time. So the supermarket can just uh, provide this amount for upregulating. Uh, for downregulating and this amount for upregulating. And we have, uh, in this scenario, a, a supermarket uh, uh, will uh, do both upregulating and downregulating, but chiller is just doing downregulating, so we just melt ice uh, in the tank. So we start from here, at, at the end, you can see how much ice we melt to provide the cooling load at GOMFOS. So let me uh, talk more about uh, our setup. In order to uh, develop uh, an ag aggregator setup in direct control, we need to establish these three items. Uh, one is the information exchange between the components. Uh, one is the model of the consumption units. And uh, the last one is the optimization problem at the aggregator. We need to specify these three items. So let me go through the details of, this, of each of these. Uh, first, the information exchange. But uh, you can see also on the screen that the chiller is uh, switched off uh, according to aggregator comments and the supermarket try to follow the reference. So as I said, uh, what uh, information we need to uh, exchange, uh, what uh, the DSO will send to the aggregator. Uh, in our setup, we consider uh, that the DSO will send a 24-hour power reference to the aggregator before the activation time. So um, when we have uh, um, activation, for example, uh, DSO uh, will uh, set it to the power max, and when there is no activation, uh, DSO will set it to the maximum uh, power of the whole portfolio. So for example, here we assume one activation time, but it uh, depends on the contract. Uh, we can assume more than one activation time and also uh, we can negotiate about the duration of the activation. Then uh, the aggregator received this power reference and uh, uh, the aggregator will extract the duration of activation and the uh, time of the activation and uh, the aggregator will uh, report this to the supermarket and chiller before the activation time. But uh, uh, what kind of information we need to exchange uh, during the activation time? from the aggregator to the supermarket at each sampling time. Uh, the aggregator uh, will uh, send the uh, uh, vector, which contains the uh, desired deviation uh, from the baseline uh, from the current time to the end of the activation. So uh, this means, for example, that the aggregator asks the consume, ask the supermarket to increase uh, the consumption by this amount and then decrease it by this amount from its preferred consumption. Uh, other than this, uh, the aggregator uh, also needs to communicate the uh, time of the first upregulating time <laughs> and uh, the uh, duration of the uh, first upregulating time. Uh, supermarket uh, needs to know this in order to uh, calculate uh, its uh, flexibility, uh, Torben will explain this uh, in his slide, but if we uh, don't communicate this, then supermarket might simply say there is no flexibility in my 
uh, PERs. Uh, how about the chiller? Uh, the chiller we use in this uh, uh, demonstration can just accept uh, three levels of power, and uh, mm, these are basically zero, one, and two. So uh, zero means that please charge the ice tank uh, uh, with the maximum power. One means discharge it uh, without power consumption, and two means just consume your baseline. Uh, so what uh, the consumer needs need to report to the aggregator. Um, from the chiller to the aggregator, uh, the chiller should uh, communicate the uh, actual measured power uh, to the aggregator. Uh, and uh, other than this, it uh, needs to communicate the minimum power, the maximum power, and the baseline power. Um, and uh, these uh, values uh, might change uh, during the activation. But for example, for, for our chiller in this demo, uh, these are fixed uh, during the activation time. Uh, and uh, what else? Uh, uh, we, the aggregator cannot uh, switch on and off the uh, chiller as fast as uh, she wants. Uh, and there is uh, some uh, limit uh, on it, on the minimum run time and stop, <coughs> stop time. So uh, when uh, we ask the chiller uh, to uh, be switched off, uh, we cannot ask uh, him to switch on uh, before uh, any of these uh, samples. So this also should uh, uh, communicate to the aggregator, uh, but just once before the activation time as a constraint that uh, should be taken in, in, into account in our uh, uh, controller. And uh, in connection to this constraint, the aggregator also needs to know the status of the chiller before the activation time in, in case if there is a, a switching during this time. Sometimes I cannot focus because I'm also <laughs> looking at the <laughs> graphs and I'm nervous to see what happens. <laughs> but I save uh, some uh, results. Uh, the last time I uh, run my program from all work, it works well and I can show you and I can promise there is no cheating. <laughs> Okay, uh, aggregator also needs to know some parameters that describe the flexibility of chiller system and uh, also the simple model of chiller system. And these uh, parameters basically are the uh, state of the charge in the beginning of the activation and also the COP of the system. So the, the chiller needs to uh, report the COP in charging mode and in direct cooling mode. Uh, you, you can see uh, in charging mode the, the building is not uh, in the loop and chiller is just used to charge the ice tank and in direct cooling mode the, the uh, ice tank is not utilized and the chiller is uh, cooling the building alone. And uh, other than this, uh, the aggregator needs to know the thermal energy in the beginning of the activation time, uh, how much energy uh, you can provide for upregulating and for downregulating. How about the supermarket? Same as chiller, the supermarket needs uh, to communicate the measured power at uh, each uh, sampling time and also the minimum power, the baseline power and the maximum power for the supermarket. These are not fixed during the activation. And the uh, we model the uh, so several cold rooms and display cases that the supermarket are lumped together to one storage, and we model uh, the thermal uh, capacity of the food in one storage. So uh, same as the chiller, uh, the aggregator needs to know uh, the available flexibility for up and down regulating uh, in the beginning, and also we need uh, we model the thermal energy changes. 
uh, with respect to power change with a first order model and this first uh, order model parameters k and tau should also be uh, communicated uh, to the uh, aggregator. In our setup, these are fixed during the activation, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, we deviate once, but uh, uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, we can also update these parameters uh, if we have some uh, online estimation at the supermarket. Okay. Uh, According uh, to the agenda, uh, Torben should, talk, should come and talk about his own system, but uh, before that we assume break, but you can also ask questions during this time because we need one hour to uh, show something on the screen and maybe it's a bit boring <laughs> to look at just the screen and see, yeah, it's not uh, interesting demonstrating something with, uh, about thermal storage is not that much interesting, I know, so. But uh, maybe I can say a bit about this. Uh, actually, uh, when we run uh, our, al our algorithms before, many times, we see that uh, we cannot uh, be below the power max all the time. But uh, we have to deviate it, but for, for short uh, period, because, um, Units, uh, the, the response uh, uh, of the units uh, to the step change is always with delay and with some overshoot. And during this time, uh, we uh, deviate the, uh, uh, the, the limit, but I don't think it's a problem from, maybe they, David can say it better. I don't think it's a problem from DSO point of view if we deviate this limit. And I, I, I guess we discussed it once uh, through the Skype, uh, if, if we debate it for uh, just few sample time. But at least with this, and now we come back, <laughs> uh, but with this, uh, solution, we can uh, uh, offer these services for a long period uh, with uh, uh, aggregating uh, the flexibility of two different DRs. And uh, the DRs uh, doesn't uh, need to run uh, for a long time outside of uh, their optimal behavior. So, yeah. We have also, uh, the Chile is also getting off. Actually, Casper would like to see this behavior because said, I can explain it. <laughs> so, I'm happy if you, uh, to answer your question if there is any question. Or you are free to go and enjoy the coffee. <laughs> I, I will just have one comment. I yes. mean, we all appreciate a slow simulation. But this is not a simulation. This is actually real because yeah. you can see over there on the monitors there that actually something is happening in Syslab even though that you cannot hear. But yeah. you can see that the same values that are displayed there are displayed over there. So she is not cheating. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I have a friend uh, at Gonfos. I can call her and ask if he can feel it. <laughs> this. <laughs> I can, maybe, I, I can maybe comment on, you can say, you go over the limit there, but uh, as Amir said, it isn't really a, a, a big issue for, for the DSOs, because the, the grid can handle that uh, a bit of overload in, in a short period of, of time. So if it's a, an overload of yeah, even 50% or, or even 100% maybe in five minutes, it, it isn't a big, a big issue for, for the DSO. Uh, it can, it, it, uh, the grid can handle uh, a critter by uh, uh, a bit of an overload in a short period of time. So yeah. yeah, thank you yeah. for saying this. You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, maybe it's good to say that the, in this demo, we just used two units, and it's really difficult uh, to provide something with these two units and we have some limitations. Uh, for example, the chiller system can just accept some discrete level, so we don't have that much flexibility, but, at, uh, but uh, with this situation, we can offer these services. But if, I mean, if we have uh, several units, then 
uh, we definitely can offer uh, uh, this service in a better way, uh, but the, the main point is here is that we need to aggregate uh, the flexibility of different DERs to achieve this goal and to convince the DERs to take in part in this. Yes, more a uh, technical question. On the graph number one, we see the chiller. Yeah. The desired set point, the red line, is the set point coming from the aggregator to the unit. Yeah. So we observe that the aggregated power overshoot over the power max, yeah. and then the chiller reacts. But why uh, the desired it, actually it's set not, point? Uh, the reaction of the chiller is not about the, the deviation, because the, okay. uh, the chiller uh, uh, didn't see this deviation. The chiller just see the reference and uh, just react to this reference. So the closed loop is just that the aggregator see the uh, uh, updated value of maximum and minimum power and the available flexibility and send some new references. But uh, for example, in my program, sometimes it's, uh, the, the uh, optimization problem uh, was infeasible because, for example, uh, we switched on the uh, chiller and uh, we are not allowed to switch it off uh, before, any, before 10 samples, for example, in this setup. And we can see that the supermarket cannot follow and there, there are some deviation, but the aggregator uh, couldn't do anything in this region. And should, uh, so for this, uh, uh, we assume some other controller uh, than the optimal controller uh, that uh, just communicate the uh, uh, previous value to each unit as a power reference. But, um, so in this case, there was a second control loop that uh, reduced the chiller power uh, to... Yeah, uh, yes, but uh, I think maybe Casper can explain why the chiller is getting off oh, during this okay. one, but it's not uh, in response to the deviation. Okay, it's not in response the to the deviation. chiller didn't say this. Of course, yeah. yes, thank you. Thanks. But uh, maybe I can say that uh, in theory, we assume, other than this, the optimization problem, we assume uh, some... Uh, PI controller, feedback controller, uh, on above of the optimization problem to see the measurement and to change the power reference uh, according to the real measurement. But uh, it is not demonstrated today. It just, it's just in theory, hopefully in the future. Okay, maybe, maybe I could respond, to the, respond a little bit to the uh, chiller. Uh, first of all, I'm Kasper Lune from Grundfos. I will show you a few slides about the chiller system afterwards. But what you see up here is actually the fact that the chiller is very non-ideal, so it's, it's hard to predict exactly what, is, what it's going to do uh, because the, uh, it, was it is a retrofitted system, so it's not designed to, to do power reference following. So that's really what we see here, and, and on another day it would be, be above, and that's the, the kind of stuff that you have to deal with in, in the real, real world. But I won't go into details with that. Thank you. So happy you can come and I have a, a question on, on this when you start to control the, the sum of these two cycling loads, more or less. Yes. Uh, you more or less start to synchronize them, I um, guess. They, they, the, the cycling becomes yeah, yeah. connected, more yeah, or less. It's like that uh, when, the, uh, when we use the chiller, uh, we don't use the supermarket, and we use the, this time to store some energy. Yeah. And then uh, we switch to the supermarket system. Could you and say something on, now you have two, so it's obvious when you, someone, one of them does use power, the other shouldn't, or, or uh, so. Yes. But when you increase the number of, of loads that you try to, to aggregate, what happens to this synchronizing? Do you have any feeling for that? If it's mm. easier or more difficult or, or so? Yeah, if we have uh, several units, I guess we can assume uh, all the, if we have two types of B or supermarket and chiller system, I, I guess we can assume all of the supermarket as, the, as a one big supermarket. And I don't see the, okay, maybe, maybe it's see, or yeah. Okay, we'll see. But with different COP, but yeah. Okay. Perhaps I'm not answering to your question, <laughs> but. You want to come? 
um, if there is no question, maybe I can ask uh, Torben to come and explain uh, his own system, and then we will be free sooner to go <laughs> lunch. <laughs> okay.